I never liked that. I was, I was really defiant during that time when I was a kid, and I, I left when I was 17. I told my parents, I'm done, I'm not doing this. I left the church, I left the Mormon church. Uh, with that idea, I said, well, I could be a good person. I could be a good person without this Mormon church, and I'll show them that I could be a good person without the Mormon church. Let me show you. Uh, 19, all my friends went on a Mormon mission, and I decided to go into the Air Force. And I'm going to live a good life, a good person, while in the Air Force. And I totally didn't live a good life. I was fully a part of life in the Air Force, going, doing what I wanted to do, but thinking I was, I was fine because I was nice to everyone. I'm nice, I'm polite, I'm doing what all the everyone else is doing. And that worked for me. And anytime anyone brought up anything about church, it was, you guys don't even know what you're talking about right now. Everyone's putting their eggs in one basket. You know, I grew up, I grew up Mormon. My, my parents said the sky's blue. I go, okay, that's blue. You know, and then they go, this church is true. And I go, okay, the church is true. But then you find out it's not. It's not true. So I don't, I don't believe anything anymore. So Christians come to me and they might say something. And I go, you guys don't even know what you're talking about. Your parents taught you that. And that's what you believe because that's what you're taught. But it's not true. Nothing, none of this. It's just about going through life and being as good a person as you can. Be nice to people. That's how I live my life. Um, got out of the Air Force, became an electrician, and I met a guy named Pete. Pete was not a Christian. He was a Christian, but he's one of those lunatic Christians. He's one of those guys that was always preaching the word, and he needed to be, needed to be listening to Christian music. And, and uh, you know, I called him Crazy Pete, because I mean, was, Pete was a little crazy. Crazy for the Lord. I mean, he was a, he was a, he was a true believer. But me, me, me now, the, the dude was you know, a believer. And I really never, never met someone like that. Hey, Pete, what are you going to do after uh, work today? Oh, I'm going to go to a friend's house. We're going to have a Bible study. Pete, what are you doing? Or not Bible study, a prayer group. Prayer group, what do you guys pray for? Well, we pray for people who are sick, whatever. Okay, Pete. That whole week, I haven't been in work. I'm an electrician, going up and down ladders. And I had severe pain. I could barely do my job that week. Hey, you think you guys can pray for me? All right. And I told you. All right. We'll pray for you today. All right, thanks. Next week comes around, and I'm halfway through the week. I'm doing my job. Wednesday. I was like, wow, I've made it through Monday and Tuesday, and all today, I haven't had any pain. This is really weird, and, and that pain was there for, for weeks before. It's gone. It's gone. Hey, Pete, did you have to pray for me? Yeah, yeah, pray for me like you do. Unbelievable. That's a coincidence. What a crazy coincidence this is. I just remember thinking that. But that religion is nothing. It is just a coincidence. I changed careers. I decide I'm going to be a police officer. Oh, there we go. Police officer now. I have this ride over. He's a, he's a pastor. And, and he's chipping in. And, and I'm, hey, if you, want, if you want to challenge me, pastor, I'm right here. And we have all day in this car together, and we'll hash it out. And that's pretty much what we did. I mean, he was, he was, uh, talking to me, talking to me, and I, I told him, I said, listen, Asian people over in China, they believe in Buddha, whatever, and people over here believe in this, people over here believe in that, and they're all believing this thing because that's how they were raised. They were raised to believe this. And guess what? Over here in America, everyone's Christian. And you're preaching this, but guess what? It's all made up. All this is made up. Everyone chooses something. They put their eggs in one basket, and then they see what happens. I mean, that, that's it. And that guy, I know, he, I felt bad for him. But, I mean, <laughs> that's how that was. But that's what my mindset was. But these little coincidences kept on occurring over and over and over. And by the time I'm 40, um, I had to take a look at these coincidences. And... I was just driving. 
And then I said, how do I know? And I wasn't even emotional. I wasn't even emotional. I just said, how do I know? And that, that was the first time I really felt God touch me. I was crying and I was laughing. It was unbelievable, and I've never, I never felt that since. But I've never, I've never felt that, and and I've never been the same since. And right after that, anyone said they're Christian, I'm like, out there. Oh, me too, me too. I'm Christian too. And they're looking weird, like, what is this guy? Like, yeah, I'm Christian. But then I find out, hey. There's these Christians that are saying they're Christian. They're not Christian. They're out there doing things they shouldn't be doing. How are you a Christian? You, you don't be that. It's not Christ has called us to do. But I don't know anything about this Christian life. I don't know how to live it. I don't know. I don't know anyone who's Christian. And someone at work was talking to him and said, hey, listen to sermon audio. The guy goes, listen to sermon audio. Listen to this guy, really made me mad. Same with Paul Washer. <laughs> and and every, every sermon is like, oh, I like what you're saying right now. And I remember thinking, are you not liking what he's saying because it's truth? I mean, if it's true, it's true. I mean, look at it. Look at your life. Whether you're being convicted, everything that he said was true and and I saw, I saw areas in my life I needed to change. I needed to change this. I needed to change that. Um, and I kept listening to sermon audio. Well, we ended up leaving our house and moving back to Cameron Park. I, we were moving. Well, we had a house in Sacramento, but we ended up moving up here. And I'm going from church to church. I'm trying to find, you know, church in Sacramento, and everyone's having these concerts. It's these Christians that are out there going, you know, like oh, prosperity. The church will give us, hey, you want to be blessed by the end of the year? Give us money. God blesses people and gives. Um, or going somewhere else and there's concerts you want to stop in it. And, you know, something's not right here. Something's not right. And, and I end up yeah, listening to uh, Pastor Corey and Pastor Phil um, on Sermon Audio. And that's how I ended up here. I come here and and, uh, you know, that, that was the, the first time where, you know, I've read the Bible and, you know, once, once I became Christian, you know, I read the Bible, you know, and under, trying to understand it the best I can. But I come here and, you know, they're preaching the word and everyone's into the word and they're not telling their opinion. They're not saying, hey, do this or do that because I think this. And a lot of the other churches were given opinion. They were not hitting hard truth. One of the pastors one time was giving a sermon on a really controversial issue and I was amazed how well he could walk the line and not offend anyone. And I said, that's, that doesn't, that's not right. I mean, because it's really clear in scripture what it says about that, that issue. Um, but I come here and, and it's, it's all in the words. The words. What did God say? Who are we are? We're nothing without the word. We're nothing without the baseline. We have to form our life after after the truth, after what's written. Um, but my guard is still up. I, I still have I still have this this little wall up because of the experiences I've had with with uh, with being Mormon or going to different churches, meeting people who say they're Christian but they're Showing in their lives that they're not. I'm Christian, but let's look at all these girls walking by. Things like that. Things that we all know, hey, we don't do that. 2020 comes. And my life got flipped completely upside down. Uh, I'm in a new job within my, my career. And I'm no longer in a patrol car. I'm, I'm on a motorcycle, handing out tickets. That's my whole job, but 2020, they say, you can't do that, and I'm trying to figure out how to do this. My family life at home got flipped upside down. Kids are not in school anymore. Um, 
everything, and I just, I went in this huge, deep depression. Oh, I forgot the best thing, guys. This is pretty funny. This is a huge, huge chunk. I come to this church, and I'm going every week, learning, trying to learn from, 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 uh, from, from Chris in the morning at, uh, you know, Chris Wire. He had a, a class, and I'm learning. It was a Sunday school. But I'm by myself. I go to Sunday school by myself. I go to a service by myself. I go home. That's it. But I don't really talk to anyone. I just just want to learn. But I don't know how to do this Christian thing. And, uh, and I pray. I pray one night. Maybe it's, uh, it's either Saturday night or Sunday morning. And I just ask God for put one of the sheep in my life. Guide me. Don't guide me through this. And the next day or that morning... Um, you know, and I was doing this for months by myself. And all of a sudden, it's after the class, hey, what's your name? Who are you? And it was a big old turn around and do a big old smile on his face, and it's, he introduced himself as Eli. Oh, hey, Eli. Nice to meet you. Hey, you should go to this men's group at Sean's house. This is kind of fun. Sean had this cracked smile on his face, like, yeah, okay, yeah, come on over. Kind of wonder, like, who did you like just invite over to my house on Tuesday? And, and yeah, okay, you know, and, and I'm thinking, well, that's a coincidence, because I've been going there. And I, I just prayed this, and the, and the look, I, I'm, everything I prayed for, so I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy, okay, I, I am going to go. And, and that's, that's what first plugged me into this fellowship thing. I didn't know about this. I heard the word. I didn't know what it meant. But but we go there and and you know I start to, to hear from these guys and, and hear what's going on in their lives and they hear what's going on in mine. Then 2020 hit, everything flipped upside down, and I'm used to handling everything by myself. And I found out I can't fix this. There is nothing I can do. Absolutely nothing. And I called up Pastor Corey crying. Help me. I need help. And I'm calling up the guys from the men's group. Help me. Everyone's praying. I've, I don't know what to do. And that was the first time I really had to drop my hands and put trust into the Lord. Really rely on Scripture. And these guys... Every, every Monday, well, at that time we're doing Monday and Friday on Zoom. Help them pray for you. And I'm going, we're going through and we're finding out how everyone is, is doing. They're praying. And, and, and slowly over time, the Lord worked. This issue was corrected. That issue was corrected. And, you know, for the most part, everything's correct now. Everything's done. Um... Praise to the Lord. Mm. Well, what I found with those groups is we go into this world every day and we live in a fallen world. And how can you not be consumed with this world if that's all you know? And I found if you are with your guys, with your with your brothers, your true brothers in Christ, and are really pushing you, what's how are you doing? Where, where are you struggling? What, how can I pray for you? Um, and then this is how you can pray for me. This is how you can help me. And you're really part of something. When you really go into the world, you're on vacation. And you're just an observer. And you can come back and go to your friends and go, hey, check this out. This is how my day was here. This is how my day was there. And, and it's easier to go through life to, you know, uh, I wrote down a, a scripture, the whole, don't be illegally yoked by unbelievers. And that's, that's really what I learned was it's so easy to be unequally yoked to just let your guard down and okay, I'm going to conform to this little thing here, this little thing there. But if you are with your brothers and encouraging them and them encouraging you, you're staying strong to the word and and you, you are a true traveler in this world. You actually go and, and I'm just visiting this. I'm, I'm not part of this, 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 this 
Toronto on my I'm, I'm, I'm here just on, on just, just observing this and my, my, true, my true life is with my brothers in Christ and learning the word. And that's what 2020 really taught me is to just let, let my guard down, put my trust in the Lord and, and stay true to the word. And with, with, I'd slip up, but I got brothers there to help me. And before, when I slip up, guess what? It's me. It's me that I go to myself and say, oh, you can, you can fix this. Either you can or you can't. You really can't really fix much, but when you have a whole bunch of brothers around you, they're, they're poking and, uh, you know, helping you out and keeping you strong. That's, that's, what, that's what I found. Um, that's, what, that's what my lesson in 2020 was. Was I, I can't get through this life without without a foundation and without people keeping me uh, keeping me uh, in the word and the truth of the word. Um, twenty twenty, my grandma passed. I want to end with this. And uh, Pastor Corey Pastor, and uh, Pastor Phil came to the uh, to the funeral. And it turns out she was a uh, uh, she was a. Uh, um, a member here, I didn't even know. And she was praying when I was born. That would leave. Hmm. And I just think it's amazing. Yeah. And the Lord brought me back to her church. Hmm. And, you know, you think, well, coincidence. So, I don't think that's a coincidence. That's my, that's my testimony and the stuff that's happening.